Hey everyone and welcome to AMC Movie Talk. Movie Talk for movie fans. I'm Chris Lee Kennedy and this is the show where we're gonna bring you all the day's biggest movie news and of course some insight into what it all means. Joining me as always is the AMC Movie News Senior Editor John Campia. Greetings and salutations everybody. <laughs> Today's moment of truth is this. Never accuse anybody of always thinking they're right because obviously they do. If you ever say something that you don't think is right, that makes you an idiot. And sharing is caring. <laughs> Our special guest today, backed by popular demand, the director of the upcoming The Death of Superman Lives, What Happened, John Schnepp. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> What's going on? Before Happy we get to be things back. started today, John has a little announcement. Yeah, actually, uh, so the other day we mentioned this. I was uh, at the world premiere of Iron Man 3. I got to go walk down the red carpet, watch the film with everybody. And these 3D glasses here, these are the actual glasses used at the world premiere of Iron Man 3 uh, that I actually used at the world premiere of Iron Man 3. So we thought that's kind of a cool that these are the ones actually at the world premiere. So we're going to give these away. <gasps> so here's how we're going to give them away. This is how you can get your grubby little... Dirty paws on these uh, Iron Man 3 world premiere 3D glasses. Uh, simply email us. Send us an email to our regular mail-in address, amcmovietalk at gmail.com. Put in the subject line 3D glasses so we know what it's for, okay? So email us at amcmovietalk at gmail.com. Put in the subject line 3D glasses and include a picture of you or a bunch of friends or whatever holding up a sign that says AMC Movie Talk and anything else on the sign that you want, but at least have the words AMC Movie Talk. You make it as simple or as crazy as you want this picture. Send it in. We're going to pick a couple of our favorites. We'll show a bunch of them on the show, and then we're going to pick a couple of our favorites, and we will send you a pair uh, if you are one of the two that we pick of these, uh, once again, these special 3D glasses that were actually used at the world premiere. So uh, go ahead and do that. And they're super cool. They say Iron Man 3 right on the side. They're very cool. Everybody wants a pair. I'm Every just going to do that. Okay, maybe we have one pair to give away. No, apparently. you can have them. Okay, we have two. All right. So today we're starting with buy or sell? Buy and sell. All right. Universal Studios has set a release date for their upcoming film, Dracula. The film will hit AMC theaters everywhere on August 8, 2014. The film is said to explore the origin of the character. Dracula weaves vampire mythology with the true history of Prince Vlad the Impaler. It seeks to depict Dracula as a flawed hero in a tragic love story set in a dark age of magic and war. John, buy or sell Dracula. I'm actually going to buy this. Uh, like everybody else, I'm kind of tired of all the vampire movies, but Dracula's a little bit different. And, and I, I dig the origin stories and stuff like that, and I love Luke Evans, who we're going to see in Fast 6 up here pretty quick. So, yeah, for me, I'm really intrigued by it. I give it a buy. I'm going to buy it, too. Uh, Dracula, I'm always into the next newest Dracula. I, I think there's been 100 and 87 Draculas <laughs> since the very first Dracula, and I'll watch the 188th one because they're always there's always something fun about Dracula. So there is never too much Dracula or <laughs> vampires, John. Just saying. <laughs> Mike Epps and Cat Williams are set to headline a cowboy comedy in the upcoming Blazin' Four. The film and a comedy take on the Magnificent Seven. We'll see Epps as Noah, a preacher in search of redemption, <laughs> and Williams as El Loco, the leader of a villainous band of Mexican bandits who has no idea that he isn't Mexican himself. <laughs> Schnepp, buy or sell the sounds of Blazin' Four. Wow, blazing saddles. That's exactly <laughs> what I thought. I was like, as long as they do a comedy western on the tip of like Mel Brooks' super insane, silly style, I'm all into it. It's got to either be a badass western or completely stupid. So I hope they're really going to amp up the dumb and dumber aspect of blazing for. Uh, that's all I could really think of. I was actually still thinking about Dracula. I think Dracula's would actually really be cool. Frank <laughs> Langella. Gary Oldman and this new dude, three Draculas all hanging out, like smoking weed and stuff. Draculas. <laughs> well, I'm for Blazing Four. I'm gonna sell it. Um, I, we've already got another uh, Western comedy coming out with by Seth MacFarlane that I think sounds a lot more interesting. I'll give this one a shot That's certainly right. when it comes out, but I'm not really excited about the notion of it because I'm excited more for another Western coming out. So for me, it's a sell. I love Seth, but Cat Williams as a guy who doesn't know he's Mexican. Come on. 
Scarlett Johansson is said to be lined up to star in Luke Benson's new film, Lucy. Besson, who's best known for directing such films as Leon, The Professional, and The Fifth Element, will both write and direct the sci-fi action tale, which follows a young woman who gains superpowers after being forced to work as a drug mule. John, <laughs> buy or sell Lucy. Look, I, I'm going to actually sell this, oddly enough. Like, Luke Besson, I, like... He's he's great. He he's turned out some amazing amazing pictures, absolutely. But I mean, Scarlett Johansson's already kind of got the superhero thing kind of covered, doesn't she? Um, and now maybe this is going to be kind of like a Hancock thing. That's mm -hmm. kind of a darker anti-hero kind of thing, more gritty and realistic. And what would a superhero really be like in the real real world? That could be interesting. So, yeah, it might be interesting. But for now, I got to give it a sell. Schnapp. I'm going to buy it only for the fact that it's a cool science fiction film in the future, and I'm really on that tip right now. I want to see more of them. So it, I hope the superpower is just so it's like some kind of psionic, like I can read people's minds, and it's not like she's super powerful jumping from ship to ship. I think it'll probably be a little more mental-based is what my hope is. So that's not all superhero stuff. It's more like thriller or so science fiction thriller. But I'll buy it because I think – and also Scarlett Johansson in the future. Awesome. So Always buy Scarlett Johansson. Always. Always. Jake Gyllenhaal and Rene Russo are set to star in the upcoming thriller Nightcrawler, not to be confused with the X-Men hero of the same name. Real <laughs> Steel and the Bourne Legacy screenwriter Dan Gilroy will both write and make his directorial debut. The plot is said to follow Gyllenhaal as a freelance crime reporter exploring Los Angeles' criminal nightlife. Schnepp, buy or sell Nightcrawler? Buying it. <laughs> uh, criminal nightlife in L.A.? Yes. <laughs> Come on. We live in Los Angeles. There's so many weird, strange thugs and homeless people and scary people running around at night. See them, check them out, looking at them out from a car. You're like, wow, that would be horrible to be like standing right next to that person. <laughs> now Nightcrawlers, you get to see this dude having to stand next to him. So I'm... <laughs> I'm going to watch. I say bye. You know, when I first, I'm, I'm going to sell this. When I first heard oh. about it, I thought, wait a minute, Gyllenhaal as Nightcrawler in a standalone Nightcrawler movie? And I got all excited. <laughs> and then I realized, oh, mm. criminal light life, blah, blah, blah. I, the one thing that does excite me about this, though, Renee Russo is not in enough movies. Yeah. Period. Right. She is one of I'm. I will go on record. I'll put her in the one of the top twenty hottest women in Hollywood of all time. This this woman is just a classic, awesome beauty. Her she's just so sexy and she's so talented. I love seeing her pop up in Thor. But once again, I'm going to give this one a shot when it comes out. I'm curious, but in general, I'm going to give it a sell for now. I think it sounds amazing. <laughs> John Favreau may not be directing Iron Man anymore, but he's getting set to direct and star in a smaller indie feel comedy called Chef. Chef is said to take place in Los Angeles-based restaurant run by an emotional chef played by Favreau. John, buy or sell the idea for Chef. I buy it. I listen. I really, I love John Favreau as a mm -hmm. performer, as an actor. I think he's great. And when you talk about these these smaller films that he's made before, like Swingers or Made, I think he's got a great feel for it. And I love. We were just talking about this. Like I, I, I saw him at the premiere for Iron Man Three. I love that he's fat again. <laughs> I love it. That's the John Favreau we love, and especially because he's playing a chef. You know, we were just talking off screen. We were talking about UFC fighters. A buddy of mine has has this great saying about UFC fighters. He goes. I don't trust a pretty UFC fighter any more than I trust a skinny chef. And if John Favreau's playing a chef, I want him to put those extra 100 pounds on. I think this sounds great, so I'm a buy. Hey, I'm going to buy it, too, because John Favreau's really funny. Uh, I love swingers as well. And uh, an emotional chef is a thing that tagged me. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll see that. And some guy exploding in the kitchen, you know, like kitchen nightmares or something. I don't know. <laughs> or is he going to be overly sensitive and crying because people didn't like his pasta? <laughs> uh, whatever it's going to be, awesome. be, I think it'll be funny, so. Totally Man. hoping for the overly sensitive. All right, folks. Listen, we've come to that part of the show for mailbag. We're actually going to try to squeeze in a few more mailbag questions today. Listen, if you've got a topic or a question you would like us to address on the show, email us anytime at amcmovietalk at gmail.com. We get like over 100 every day now. But we go through all of them. We pick out a few every day to address on the show. We've got a few pulled out right now that Crystal Lee's got. So, Crystal Lee, what do we have? Sayful H writes, Hey guys, love your show. I've been watching every episode since I found your awesome channel a couple of weeks ago. Well, thank and, you. And my question is, now that the character Daredevil is reverted back to Marvel, do you think Kevin Feige would have any plans for this character in the MCU or its own franchise and a possible crossover with the Punisher, which was also reverted back to Marvel? What do you think? First of all, let me say this. I am one of the few people who will stand on a soapbox and proclaim to you, I loved Daredevil the movie. I did. 
deal with it. So I okay. understand all the problems with it, and I understand why you may not like it, and that's cool. But I personally take away the teeter totter scene, which was awful. Yes, <laughs> but take that scene out. I think it's an all time classic <laughs> comic book movie. Now, um, saying that, I think Feige probably will have some plans for Daredevil, but no obviously nothing in Phase Two, and I even doubt they're going to do anything with Daredevil in Phase Three. But maybe further down the road, Punisher is a more interesting character because Punisher has had three kicks at the can so far: one with Dolph Lundgren, one with Thomas mm -hmm. Jane. And one with, oh, a dude from Rome who's in Thor now. Ray Stevenson. Ray Stevenson, Ray Stevenson, who was awesome in Dexter, by the way, if you didn't see him in his season of Dexter. And they've all, financially at least, really failed. Um, I really like the Ray Stevenson version, actually. Yeah, and, me and too. I, I, loved, I loved Warzone. Yeah, I did. Me too. And I really like the Thomas Jane short Punisher film that he put online last year. I thought that was right. kind of cool. But I think Disney will be a lot more hesitant about a Punisher simply because... It's tried and failed a couple of times, and it's a more difficult, darker, much more violent character. So I, I don't know if they'll have plans for Punisher, but I do think after Phase 3, we'll see something with Daredevil. Schnepp, what are your thoughts on all this? I was talking about this, uh, nerding out with a couple of friends like two days ago about this Daredevil. I think it would be great as a television series. I mean, Ooh. just think about it. Like, Matt Murdock's a lawyer. <clears throat> All those aspects that were in the extended director's cut of the Daredevil movie where they had a lot of scenes of him doing the legal stuff, which were also really cool. I I'm also one of those people that actually liked the Daredevil movie. So um, I think Daredevil as a television series, and you can bring in Black Widow, like Scarlett Johansson, and do a couple of guests and scenes in the TV series, because she's a, you know, was a pretty big part of the Daredevil comic book. So, I would, I would see them doing that and locking that in with Shield. Why not do Daredevil as a TV series? I think it would, it would build the character up. You don't have to put a lot of impact on it, making a big screen type of thing. It could be like a cool TV series, crime procedural. You know. All right. What's I'd next? sign up for that. Riley O'Brien writes, do you feel like Guardians of the Galaxy could be Marvel's first, not flop, but disappointment? My wife works in five schools with Cub Scouts, and she asked them about Guardians, and only one kid knew who they were, and that's out of five schools. I asked my adult friends, and one knew who they were, but he follows all comics. I know a lot of superheroes, but I have no clue about Guardians of the Galaxy. I've heard there is a raccoon who talks and carries a gun, <laughs> but that's about it. Sounds kind of silly to me and not very movie worthy to see. I think Marvel needs to be very careful with this one and get a lot of information out there on Guardians. What do you guys think? Am I worried about nothing? If you're worried about Rocket Raccoon, which you shouldn't be, <laughs> wait till you get a load of Groot. <laughs> the the yes, walking, right. the ant, <laughs> waiting, the walking tree. I am Groot. Um, yeah. But look, I, in general, <clears throat> Uh, Riley, I, I think, yeah, you do have to be concerned about the fact that there's like basically little to no public awareness of who or what the Guardians of the Galaxy are. Yes, absolutely. But people know what the Marvel Cinematic Universe is. And I guarantee you, Marvel is not stupid. They have plans in place that by the time Guardians of the Galaxy comes around, you're going to know who they are. They're going to be peppered in somehow, some way with Thor, or they're going to be peppered in some way, more likely, with the next Captain America, because that's the, the movie that leads directly into Guardians of the Galaxy. And you're probably going to have some of the Avengers pop up individually in small roles and in small parts in Guardians of the Galaxy, because Guardians of the Galaxy is the movie that then leads directly into Avengers 2. So, yes, you're right. There's not a lot of public awareness, but they do. the public does know the Marvel Universe, and I guarantee you Marvel will make sure that we're very aware of the Guardians of the Galaxy before the movie comes out. Schnepp? Yeah, <clears throat> I'm in agreement. I mean, remember, I bet a bunch of those kids in the Cub Scouts didn't know who Iron Man was before Iron Man came out. Right. I mean, a lot of these characters aren't just weren't household names. Everybody knew who Batman, Spider-Man were, but they didn't know who Iron Man was, or even Captain America for that matter. So I think Guardians of the Galaxy, though it's even more obscure than those, is going to be a gigantic hit, and uh, you don't. I don't know why you're worried about it. Are do you own part of Marvel? Are you concerned about <laughs> them losing money? I'm very worried about it. Don't worry about it. I think it's going to be fantastic. Put all those worries in a box somewhere, and then bury that box because none of that matters. I think it's going to be a great film. So, 
Kajua Jensen writes, I'm a big fan of the Dark Knight movies. Nolan did a great job with the main villains, like the Joker and Bane. Was wondering, what's the chances that those two villains get a spinoff movie? I think the popularity of the Dark Knight movies have created an audience for a Bane movie or a Joker movie. Both prequels of how they became and what they did before the Dark Knight movies. Would people go see movies like this? No. <laughs> but for short and sweet. It's funny when you first mentioned it, though. I had this vision of my head of like a buddy cop fi film with like Bane and Joker. One guy's hopped up on steroids. The other guy's a little insane. To, you know, it's something yeah. wacky. But no, one guy is extra mumbly and you can't hear what he's saying. Other guys always laughing. Yeah. <laughs> um, but okay, but but no, I don't think you could see a spin in either. Number one, because I, I think a lot of people, even people who really love Dark Knight Rises will say that Bane probably wasn't pulled off the way he should have been pulled off. And really, <clears throat> I mean, the dude, I don't want to see a solo movie about a dude who sounds like an effeminate English butler. <laughs> I oh, will Josh, destroy. Oh, why do you say that, Josh? <laughs> why do you see it? You can't even understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Dinner is served. You will have poached salmon tonight. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I don't see it. And the other thing is with the Joker... Okay, look, uh, everybody can be replaced, including Heath Ledger as Joker. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of in context of if you're going to bring the Joker back in a Batman film. Let, let's say Christopher Nolan was doing another Batman film, which he is not. But let's say he was. I'm cool with the idea of bringing Joker back, the, now having it played by Crispin Glover because it's playing off Christian Bale as Batman, blah, blah, blah. But I think it might be a little bit different if you're talking about a Joker standalone movie that is supposed to be the same Joker from The Dark Knight. Mm -hmm. At that point, I think it becomes a little bit more conspicuous that it's not Heath Ledger. And I, I just don't think that would work, and I don't think audiences would really embrace it. That's just, that's just I might be wrong. That's just my opinion on it. Schnepp, what do you think? Yeah, no, I think you're totally right. I think it's just a very funny... Uh, it's one of those like kind of like super sweaty dream questions like <laughs> what about a Joker movie? It's like maybe in 50 years after every single every single superhero like the Dazzler and all these other <laughs> characters that you've never heard of have been made into movies. Then there's going to be a Bane movie. I mean, otherwise, that's right, it's really it's I mean, it's an interesting question. But to me, it's a very funny question. Like, I agree, like the Joker and Bane team up buddy cop film of the year <laughs> in 2048. You know, it's just. <laughs> It just doesn't make any sense right now. Like you have Bane and like a, a what, what do you think Bane? Bane? Um, um, they're trying to do the Heath Ledger Joker, or what are you going to do the Caesar Romero? Like woo, you know? And like, I just it makes no sense. Like, and why would someone be like, well, we're done with the Christian Bale. Now let's make these strange standalone supervillain movies. It's a weird. It's weird. Well, I want to see the Bizarro movie, Superman's <laughs> villain Bizarro on the Square Planet. Like a whole ninety minutes about that. But it's like, I think that with his wacky all... with his wacky roommate Solomon Grundy, that's a <laughs> yes. that's a movie right there. I think anyone who's watching this and wants to do a fan movie, like just shoot it in your backyard and do like a Bane and the Joker like ninety minute film shot on like Super Eight or something or High Eight or any like low cost c type of camera that you own, that would be awesome. I think that's kind of the way it should go. You know. All right. Eddie Williams writes, Greetings, love the show. I was wondering with the interpretation of Superman and Man of Steel being grounded in reality, will Superman have the secret identity as Clark Kent or will the citizens of Metropolis know who he really is? Along with the red underwear the costume traditionally has had, wearing glasses to conceal your identity just seems to be ludicrous and out of the place this day and age. Yeah, you know what? Honestly, I was thinking this exact same thing the other day, Ed, Eddie. I, I really was that in this more realistic kind of gritty kind of feel thing, a, a dude who is so famous and on the cover of every newspaper just putting on glasses, <laughs> that, that wouldn't fit in this post-Dark Knight movie trilogy superhero world. It just it just wouldn't work. It's like, hello, everybody. I was uh, just I'm, say. I'm John Campia. I'm the uh, editor-in-chief of AMC Movie Talk. But wait, I need to go away for a second. I am Dolovanovich, famous European porn star. <laughs> Whoa, wait, now John Campy's back. Where did Dravanovich go? I, I mean, it's ridiculous. It can't work. See, what, now Chris Lee's my... back. Now Chris Lee's gone. Where's Chris Lee? Uh -huh. um, it, it just, I don't think that would work. That was cute and funny 
in like say the Christopher Reeve version of Superman that's kind right. of cute and it's a running joke about just putting on the glasses nobody knows who he is but I, I don't think that would work in today's thing and I don't think it would work in Man of Steel so I'm almost willing we don't see him as Clark Kent like the the reporter yeah. at the Daily Planet. I mean, we know the Daily Planet is there. We know it's going to be a part right. of the movie because we got a Perry White and we got a Jenny Olsen and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know that he's going to be the intrepid reporter, Clark Kent. Yeah. I just don't think it's going to happen. Schnepp, am I wrong or am I not? Am I missing something here? No, you know what? It's like here I am with my glasses on, <laughs> and yet I'm still me with my glasses on. <laughs> And then I put my glasses back on, and yet I'm still me. <laughs> but look at this weird beard. All the stuff with uh, the Man of Steel, you see him all beardo and, like, working at a, you know, on a shipyard with a beard. So I think that's, the, that's his secret identity is beardo. And then when, <laughs> when he finally gets, like, busted and Lois Lane is like, yo, Superman, what's up, son? He has to shave the beard. Or he's Superman and Lois Lane meets up with him. I just don't think that Clark Kent uh, alter ego is going to play a large part in Man of Steel. That's my guess as well as yours. So I think he's just Beardo and then he becomes Superman. So. <laughs> Beardo to Superman, Beardo. the classic story. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Ild S. writes, hey guys, love the show and look forward to it every day. This question is about War Machine and is a year late, but since Iron Man 3 is coming out soon, it seems appropriate. So where was he in the Avengers? What was the real reason for John Cheadle's absence? And also, how did they explain it in the Marvel Universe? All right, uh, actually, really well-timed question because I actually just sat down with Don Cheadle to talk about Iron Man, and we specifically addressed the, the separation between the responsibilities of War Machine and the responsibilities of Iron Man. So before I go on any further, we're just going to show you a quick clip of me and, and Cheadle addressing that one specific question. Here, take a look at this. Mm. One of the things that I loved with Rhodes in this one is how immediately they kind of established almost like a a church and state relationship between War Machine, Iron Patriot, and and uh, Tony. And you know why War Machine isn't called in with certain Avengers things maybe, and why Tony isn't called in a Mandarin right away. How do you see that separation and how their roles are defined, and also the evolution of Rhodes as we move into Iron Man 3? Well, yeah, I mean, we've got a public sector superhero, so to speak, and a private sector superhero. And sometimes never the twain shall meet. In, unless it's Tony and and Rose, right. where at the end it's like we're going to get together and we're going to both do this together. It was a lot of fun to see the relationship strengthen and get deeper and also to to be in that third act and be outside of the suit and get to do a lot of the stuff, just the stunt work and all the wire work. So yeah, like without, this isn't a spoiler because this happens very, very early in the movie. Tony and, and Rhodey have this conversation where they're sitting down just talking and it really becomes clear in that conversation that Rhodey is the government. He works with the government and they deal with government stuff. Tony is a superhero who deals with superhero stuff. You know, they, you know and Tony's asking him because the Mandarin's already been around for a while, and, and but he's just a, a regular terrorist in their eyes. And so, like, Tony asks him, like, why, hey, why haven't you guys called me in to help with this? This is, I, I got some new tech that could really help. And Rhodey's like, because this isn't superhero business. This is government stuff, you know? So they kind of set up that church and state and that really, I think, fully explains why he we didn't see War Machine or Iron Patriot, whatever, in uh, in the Avengers. And I, I like the way they're dealing with that. Schnepp, what about you? Do you like the way they're kind of creating that division between the two? Or do you think there should be some superhero crossover with War Machine? Uh, no, I, I, I dig it. I mean, I didn't think, I didn't really think that much about it. There were some military, uh, you know, obviously, in the Avengers movie, some of the Army Reserves came in, just, you know, when the hole opened in outer space and all that stuff. I wasn't exactly thinking that, where's War Machine? Because he's part of the, you know, the Army. I figured, you know, whatever. It's like, maybe he was going to show up, or maybe he wasn't called in yet, or whatever. If you're like, just, if you think about it. I actually didn't think about it when I saw the Avengers. And then, you know, this question was brought up. And I was like, yeah, he was probably hanging out. And they were like, don't go yet. Not yet. All right, wait. <laughs> so, don't worry about it. <laughs> They're just holding him back. He was—he had a nuke attached to him. He was all ready to take off. Hang on a second. Wait, the Avengers got it. Just chill. You take the nuke off. It's one of those things. Like, all right, cool. You know, we don't, they don't need me. So, all right, we got time for one more. Last but certainly not least, Elliot M writes in, "Hey guys, love the show. So I was wondering if WB could possibly hire Nolan as a creative consultant slash producer for their future DC movie slate to Godfather, their DC universe, similar to what Whedon is doing at Marvel. I know he doesn't want to do superhero films forever, but maybe WB could strike a deal to allow him to create any passion projects he wants, a la Interstellar. 
as long as he is willing to oversee the DCU. I think having his name in the credits adds more credence to the movies as well, given his reputation from the other great films. Thoughts? Well, there's a couple things. uh, First of all, thanks for the question, Elliot. Number one, uh, Christopher Nolan already has clearance to do whatever movie he wants with Warner (laughs) Brothers because everything gets Academy Award nominations and makes a lot of money. So they're already going to let him do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to be involved in the DCU. But the other thing is this. Keep this in mind. I know this isn't going to sound popular, but, but think about this. Why do you need Christopher Nolan in there? Yeah, he did a great job. Amazing job with the Batman franchise that he did. Absolutely. But remember... He's a producer on Man of Steel, but Man of Steel is not, and he's had his influence there, but Man of Steel is not Christopher Nolan's film. It's David Goyer and Zack Snyder's film. Do you remember, David Goyer is the one who came up with the idea for Superman and scripted it out and wrote it. Zack Snyder's the guy directing it. Yeah, you had Christopher Nolan there kind of shepherding it a little bit, probably giving some input, um, like was, I I think was one of the guys who helped decide to pick Zack Snyder as the director. But overall, I think his influence is going to be tempered. I don't think you can see a lot of Christopher Nolan influence in there because it's it's David Goyer's movie. It's Zack Snyder's movie. So do you have to have Christopher Nolan involved as the shepherd of the DC universe? In theory, it sounds really cool. It does. And I wouldn't be against it. But I don't, also don't, as a fan, I don't really feel the need that we got to have that. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Schnapp, what are, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, you know, to be honest with you, I, I dig Christopher Nolan. I'm really excited about him doing other kinds of movies. Like, I can't wait to see Interstellar. And I, I, I don't want him to do superhero films anymore. And I don't, want, I don't even like the whole, let him godfather this, this, and that. Mm-hmm. It's like, when, since when did he become the godfather of superhero movies? Everyone, <laughs> right. I've, I always keep hearing that. Well, it's cool that Christopher Nolan's godfathering this or godfathering the Superman thing. He's godfathering it. He's not the godfather. He's not some weird Don that you come <laughs> kiss Nolan's finger. He's just a really creative director and filmmaker. That's it stop calling him the godfather it's bugging me um and no i don't think he needs to be in charge look green lantern sucked because it sucked it's not christopher nolan's fault if he was involved in it maybe and it sucked it would have tarnished everybody's view of christopher nolan you know that was just like a bad movie all i'm saying is i think you know let christopher nolan do what he wants don't try to bind him into doing these other superhero movies like by like hey you can have this movie then do a superhero movie uh, he's got like like you said john he's gonna do whatever he wants because he's got a golden ticket right now so i don't i don't see why he can't do a movie unless he wants to do it that's how i would if he's interested in doing something let him do it if it's involved with superheroes i'd say let him do it if he doesn't want to do any more superhero movies don't force him to so all right folks well, listen that'll do it for us and, and don't be alarmed it's actually me i'm still it's actually me i'm still here <laughs> uh Thank you so much for joining us for that time. But listen, while I got you, before you do anything else, I get asked all the time, John, how can we support the show? Well, uh, unlike a lot of other shows, we don't need your money. We, you don't have to send us money. But we would love it if you could like <laughs> click that thumbs up button and most importantly, click that subscribe button. Become a subscriber to our AMC Movie News YouTube channel. It'll keep you up to date on everything going on in the world of movie news and of course, our daily AMC Movie Talk Show. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash amctheaters. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash amctheaters. And go out and see a movie tonight. Maybe get your advanced tickets for Iron Man 3. Head on over to www.amctheaters.com to get all your theater and showtime and movie ticket information. If you want an audio-only version of this show, look in the description of this video. You'll find links to our iTunes and our Stitcher Radio so you can listen to us on your commute to work. And listen, once again, if you want one of these pairs, one of these two pairs of Iron Man 3 3D glasses that were actually used at the world premiere red carpet the other night in Hollywood... Uh, that I actually, I, I wore these. I don't know if that adds or detracts significantly from the value, but I did wear adds these. Adds to it. Uh, it. Adds to it. Send in a picture of yourself or a group of friends in something simple or something crazy holding a sign that says AMC Movie Talk and anything else on it that you want. Send it to amcmovietalk at gmail.com. We'll show a bunch of them on the show and then we'll pick two and we'll send you the glasses. So thank you so much for joining us. I want to thank, as always, our lovely host, Miss Chris Lee Kennedy. Thank you, Chris Lee. Thank you for having me. The one and the only making his triumphant and return, Mr. John Schnepp. Woohoo! Hey, make John Campia sign those uh, Iron Man shades, right? No, sign <laughs> that. <laughs> and thank you most of all to you guys. Listen, once again, the most important part of this show is not what we have to say. It's what you have to say. Make sure you jump down to the comment section and leave your thoughts on any or all of the topics we discuss here today. I guarantee you we read every single one of the comments that goes in there, so make sure you pop those in there. So... Until Monday, folks, have a wonderful weekend. We will see you then. My name is John Campy for AMC Movie News. Bye-bye.